Good morning. It's mid-April and we are at the Greater Des Moines Botanical Garden in the Wells Fargo Rose Garden. It's a beautiful morning this morning. It's a little cool, but I'm here with Leslie Hunter and she is the person that manages this gorgeous rose garden. And the interesting thing about the garden is that it's all taken care of organically. And so I wanted to get her secrets and learn a little bit more about how she does that. So, hey Leslie. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. Oh, you p we picked a great day for it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. So, this is an interesting garden because it's a rose garden. Correct. You have more than 100, 200 plants here, right? Correct. I have 121 different cultivars of roses and about wow. 215 rose plants. Wow among all the other plants that are in these garden beds. Right, but it's not just a rose garden. No, no, I, I don't like to call it a rose garden. I like to call it my garden with, with roses. <laughs> that makes so, sense. Yeah. Is that one of the tenants, the key tenants of being able, or is that one of the main reasons you're able to grow them organically? Um, it definitely helps, it definitely helps. Um, it's, it's kind of, our, our philosophy is that you should treat a rose kind of like as a, another ornamental. Um, shrub, mm -hmm. is that essentially what they are. Mm -hmm. um, we integrate uh, perennials, receding annuals, um, bulbs and vines in this garden that help kind of enhance the roses themselves, but they also bring in other beneficial insects right. that help with some of the pest control that we need in this garden. So it makes a lot, a big difference culturally and also it just makes it more interesting visually too. Correct. <laughs> well, and as you know, this is the front, we call this the front yard of the botanical garden. Right. When you first come here, this is one mm -hmm. of the first gardens that you interact with. Mm -hmm. So to have a traditional rose garden where it's just roses lined up is not very interesting. Yeah. And once they're not blooming, that's it. Yeah, then what? So. Um, when I took over this garden six years ago, that's kind of what we had here. Mm -hmm. And I was like, let's make it, and let's make it more interesting. Our director of horticulture at the time, Kelly Norris, he and I had the same philosophy on mm -hmm. this, um, that we just really wanted to enhance these roses and, and show gardeners what they can do with these plants. Well, it's a great display. Yeah. So what are we doing today? So right now is pruning season for uh -huh. our roses. Um, today I'm working on a David Austin rose. This is an English rose. It's the kind of the category. There are about 56 different categories to roses. Okay. So there, there are a lot of yeah. them out there. Um, this would be considered a modern rose because it was bred after was it, 1856 or something. I can't remember. <laughs> it's a broad the definition of there's modern. A, there's, <laughs> there's old garden rose. There's yeah. two different yeah, categor big right. categories, uh -huh. old garden roses and then modern roses. Okay, yeah. So um, a lot of what we're dealing with in here is, is modern roses. Most of the shrub roses we grow today are modern yes. roses. Yes, hybrid right? teeth. Yeah. A hybrid tea is kind of what set off the modern rose. Um, okay. But you don't grow you don't grow hybrid teas. We in this do garden. not grow hard hybrid teas in this right. garden. We um, focus on hardy roses here, we, right? We focus on hardy roses for Iowa. Um, mm -hmm. We want to showcase roses that people can can get and grow in their gardens with very little care. Right, and so, so you said there are you have David Aust some David Austin David roses. Austin roses. I grow a lot of the um, Dr. Um, Griffith Buck roses. Griff um, Dr. Buck was a professor at Iowa State, uh -huh. and his goal was to grow roses that you could that were cold hardy, disease resistant, and beautiful, and you didn't have to do the Minnesota tilt. And um, a lot of people don't know what that is, but right. that was developed in Minnesota yeah. where you would <laughs> actually like um, in the fall, you would kind of dig slice under one side of your rose and kind of <laughs> tilt it over and then kind of bury it in a little rose coffin for the winter. Right. To protect it. To protect through it. The, through the cold winter. Yes. And these are roses that don't need that. No. They're fine just standing they in the garden They are just fine. You can, don't have to do anything to them. Right. And so you have buck roses and then a lot of other roses. Too. I have Canadian roses that were bred in Canada. Uh -huh. We call them Canadian roses. Right. So they are, are hardy to zone three. Right. Um, so you know they, they can survive a winter here. Uh -huh. And then a lot of miscellaneous type shrub roses. If you'd like a list of the hardy roses that we're growing here, at the, that we, <laughs> that Leslie's <laughs> growing here at the Botanical Garden, we'll drop a link for that in the, um, in the chat. So let's talk about getting ready for winter with these, this rose garden. Uh, what, do you, what do you need to do to prepare it? Well, most of, like I said, roses are hardy, um, but I do a, a little protection because this is a very exposed site. Mm -hmm. um, we do get the wind and snow and salt and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So um, what I do in the fall is I will get a compost and just take a bucket and just put it over the crown of each rose plant. It just kind of gives it a little extra insulation 
Plus in the spring, um, that compost can be worked into the soil. So right. I'm, already, I'm already there. And as you, you can kind of see, we'll, we'll look at these, I, I kind of scratch that out and it, and it helps create kind of a well for me in the spring with that right. extra compost that I can add my, um, my fertilizer to. Okay. So just one bucket full of compost one around each One bucket plant, of compost. You can use anything. I, in my home garden, I use chopped up leaves. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of insulate the crown yeah. there. You can use um, mulch if you like. That helps, just uh -huh. anything. Um, just a little something, yes, organic, a little, just some organic material. Yes, as long as it's good draining, because you yeah. don't want water to sit and freeze on there. Right, so. okay, great. Um, and I also have to kind of fence off the garden in the winter, because I have a, uh, <laughs> these little fun little furry animals oh. that like to chew rabbits. on my roses. Yep, Ugh. rabbits. Oh, and if you have a deer problem as well, mm -hmm. you may want to fence off your roses. Cause so how will... do you fence them off? Do you fence them off individually or each bed? I do the beds. Okay. I tried doing individual roses before, but mm -hmm. that just, I Not mean, enough. with yeah. 200 plants, that's a lot. <laughs> So let's get back to pruning. Yes. So today we're pruning. Yes. And uh, what's the what's the goal with pruning? So I um, when I teach pruning classes, um, I tell people there's basically three three things you start with. And those are the three D's. So dead, diseased, and um, dying. So I mean yeah. it's like yeah. and anything that's cross branching too. Okay. So. What your goal is for a rose bush is um, to kind of treat it like a vase. So it's going to be kind of open in the middle, mm -hmm. and then everything is going to be facing outwards. So any okay. buds that you are going to prune to, you want those buds to break out instead of in. Okay. So that's going to help with the air circulation within the rose, which helps keep down things like fungal diseases, like black spot, um, um, botrytis, any of those things that are that could be a problem. So. And it just helps with the whole um, beauty of the of the rose itself. Makes it makes it just uh, have a nicer shape and yeah. habit. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Now some roses, um, you know, if they're kind of on the cusp of our hardiness zones, mm -hmm. um, they may have a lot more dieback. Mm -hmm. So you may not have much to prune, <laughs> other than all the dead canes down to the ground with some buds coming up. And so, so then you won't you won't always be able to get the nice vase shape that, it, these, exactly, that we are with these here. Exactly. Sometimes it's more of a, yes. a stick. So that is why, like, you know, with things, roses like hybrid teas, roses that are grafted, mm -hmm. if they die back to the ground, you may not get those back simply because what you'll have coming up is the rootstock is right. what you'll see. But these none of these but, roses are grafted. Um, are most David Austin root? roses are grafted. Oh, okay. But mm -hmm. a lot of my shrub roses are on their own roots. So that's not an issue. That is All not right. an issue for them. So if you see, if you get some dieback on those to the ground, that's fine. Mm -hmm. They'll come back true to form. Okay. So is this method the same for all of the roses that you grow here or mm -hmm. are there some exceptions? No. So those are kind of general rules for um, your shrub roses, any type of hybrid teas, those type of type mm -hmm. roses. But some exceptions to those would be our one-time blooming roses and also our climbing roses. Treat those just a little bit different. Okay. Obviously with a one-time rose, when they bloom, um, they're kind of like our uh, spring blooming shrubs. You don't want to cut them right before they're going to flower because mm -hmm. <laughs> you cut all the flowers off. Right. So they bloom on um, old wood. So they've kind of set their buds for, you know, this year. They're going to they're gonna flower on this, what's coming on right now, this okay. flesh. So I wait until after they're done blooming, mm -hmm. and then I prune them. Now, some people say one-time blooming roses, what's the point? Well, <laughs> unlike, you know, repeat blooming roses are nice, but one-time blooming roses put on a show for at least a month. And it is solid. So and it's is gorgeous. Big and it's are some big of them the most beautiful. fragrant? Are there some really good fragrances? There's some really good fragrance. I have mm -hmm. um, one in the garden called Mary Ann, and she mm -hmm. is just like probably one of our favorite roses. And she only <laughs> blooms one time, <laughs> but it's worth but it. It's worth it. It's totally worth it. <laughs> and so, do they have a lot of dieback in the um, winter or not? Sometimes, sometimes not. Generally uh -huh. not. So uh -huh. um, it just depends on the on yeah. the winter. And then the climbers. How climbers, do you prune those? you're you're pruning for height because obviously you want that climbing up. So mm -hmm. um, I prune those onto the structure. I try and keep it close to my structure. Um, generally, this time of year, I'll just go through them and, and prune out anything that's obviously dead mm -hmm. or um, rubbing. Um, looks like it might have a disease. I'll prune all that out. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't touch it until it's it's bloomed. Okay. And then I'll do some more pruning on it through uh -huh. the summer. Okay, I understand. Okay, good. So um, after pruning is done, uh, what next? 
So after I get done pruning all the roses, then I will apply a, a fertilizer um, to give them a good boost for their spring, spring show. Okay, and what kind of fertilizer do you like to use? Um, obviously it's organic. Right. <laughs> um, and I, the first type of fertilizer I use, I call it my super dry mix, my super dry food. Uh -huh. um, and it's in a mix of uh, alfalfa pellets. Um, I'll have uh, Epsom salt in it. I will have um, green sand. I have um, bone meal, blood meal. Um, I have a Verdanta, which is an organic slow release fertilizer okay. that I will mix in there. Uh -huh. And that's, I put that around about a cup or two, depending on the size of my rose. For each plant. For each okay. plant. Uh -huh. I put it around the base. I kind of uh -huh. work it in the soil a little bit, and then it's good to go. So this is a mix that you mix up yourself? Yes. Yes, there are commercial organic dry feeds mm -hmm. out there that you right. can find. And that's so, so, so for the homeowner who only has a few roses, that's great. Right. I have a, a lot of roses, so me buying bulk and doing it myself makes, makes more sense. Yeah. Right, that makes <laughs> sense. And then compost. And then obviously compost that I had used um, and it gets mixed into the soil and it just helps with the overall soil health of right. my garden. And then do you feed later too? Or? I do, I do. I use an alfalfa tea which I mix myself as well. Um, I, you can do this in a bucket, a pail at home if you mm -hmm. only have a few roses. Uh -huh. I have a big huge uh, cube that I use uh -huh. to, to brew about, it's about 250 gallons oh. <laughs> that, I, that right. I mix in uh -huh. and um, yeah, I just pump it into the garden. And how frequently do you use it? I use it at least once every two to three weeks Okay. Um, in June and probably about 1st of July. When it gets super hot, I will stop fertilizing my roses because they're not growing. Uh -huh. It's not, not, not useful. Not useful to the plant. Um, and then I will fertilize probably again towards the end of August, 1st of September for that last fall flush. Okay, good. Um, let's talk about watering a little bit. Yes. Diseases I know are a concern with some roses. Yes. And watering practices I know can be a big part of right. preventing diseases. Yes. Uh, what's your kind of strategy around so, that? Um, the best type of watering for your roses is probably drip, uh -huh. but a lot of us can't afford a, an expensive drip system. Right. Um, hand watering would be the next best because you can apply plant. it straight to the base of the plant mm -hmm. and not get a lot of splash back. Right. Um, but for most of us, and for like this garden, it's time consuming. Mm -hmm. I do have to use a lot of overhead watering, so sprinklers work fine. Mm -hmm. um, the key to that is doing it like earlier in the day so it has yeah. a chance to dry off. You don't mm -hmm. want to do it at night where the water would sit on the, the rose itself mm -hmm. and yeah, that's when fungal problems. spores will germ, you know, they'll you know, yeah, come yeah. up, yeah. So, um, but Do watering is important. For them to get at least um, a couple inches every week is important. Okay. So deep watering, deep, water. mm -hmm. deep watering less frequently is better than, you know, light misting every day. Right, okay. And then do, do you, have you had any problems with black spot or any kind of other fungal disease? I, I do have black spot. Uh -huh. I call it early fall color. That's <laughs> what we refer to it. I like that. <laughs> um, but most of these roses are bred to be pretty disease resistant. Okay, so yeah. if I get a little black spot, um, you know, we just kind of clean up the leaves mm -hmm. as we go. Just cut just, them off. And yeah, cut them off and take them, take them, them away. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, it, so you it's, don't do any treating particularly at this point. I, you can use things like, um, uh, baking soda, uh -huh. uh, baking soda spray, a little dish soap and some water mm -hmm. that helps lower the pH on the surface of the leaf mm -hmm. so those spores can't. And that's more of a preventative measure than a fix, right? Yeah. Typically. So yeah. if you, if you're concerned about it, that yes. would be, but you'd, in something, in a garden this scale, that's just not. <laughs> I don't know. No, right? I don't not normally do it. Right? Unless yeah. I get an outbreak, then yeah. yes, maybe right. I would have to come yeah. along and do that. that. So. How about pests? Sometimes some gardeners struggle with pests. For example, I know Japanese beetles. Are Japanese beetles, a yes. Well, because this is organic, I'm not going to be going around and spraying anything like right. orthane or anything crazy. Right. right. So um, it's kind of my, my peaceful time of the day when I come mm -hmm. out here with a bucket of soapy water and just pick them off. <laughs> and I feel better about myself. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but it's, it's Japanese beetles are something we just kind of have to live with and hope that as they cycle, we'll have better years to come. More, more um, natural predators will. Correct. Eventually, kind correct, of move in. Correct. Um, and I think that uh, that's a common problem in a, a monoculture. Um, yes. Pest when when there's a pest, and so if you were growing all roses, for example, yes, that might be a much bigger problem. Diseases, than it is, pests, same thing. Yes. Than it is in a garden where there's a lot of different 
um, a lot of variety. Yes, that helps there's a lot of interruptions yeah. to their to their feeding. <laughs> yeah, so that helps. Uh, what about other pests? Do you have um, other strategies so, for those? Um, yes, things like aphids and mm -hmm. thrips and um, those type of pests will be common on roses. Um, the reason why I do a lot of these integrated plantings with perennials and annuals is they are um, bringing beneficial insects that mm -hmm. maybe the roses don't, but but their friends do. Right. So by bringing in those beneficial insects, that helps um, keep the uh, the insect threshold down low. That makes sense. Um, we also will use um, kind of a, a bio controls or um, using insects to kill insects, as we call it. Mm -hmm. So um, I will release lacewing mm -hmm. um, larvae into the garden. Um, that helps with the um, aphids and thrips. Um, we use parasitic wasps as mm -hmm. well. You might see little. Um, cards hanging off our plants from time to time like little tags uh -huh. um, they contain like the eggs of these um, parasitic wasps oh, and they yeah. hatch and then they go find their aphids and and Natural, do their thing yeah. <laughs> so, cycle, circle of life the circle of life for <laughs> sure the circle of life good so those are the type of um, uh, bio controls that we use this has been such an interesting conversation. I, who knew that uh, you could grow roses on such a large scale and do it um, organically? Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, quite, think, I think we do a good job at it. I think you do too, it's amazing. And thanks for uh, sharing all your tips with us today. Yeah, of course. <laughs>